We are with Arthur Slade, the artist of, you might know this, Dust or Hunchback Assignments, whatever you it's Whatever you need. Well, he's an, no. he's an author that I personally like. And we're interviewing him. I am a Massey twin. He is a Massey twin. Massey twin. And <laughs> what's your comic book origin story? What's, what's my comic book origin story? Yes. Well, you know, I was uh, raised on a ranch by uh, cows, which really most most uh, superheroes aren't raised by cows so it was it was a really moving experience yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they were radioactive cows just to let you know yay <laughs> just to ingest this or make it more like comic book like <laughs> that's right yeah gamma ray cows <laughs> that is awesome gamma ray. gamma ray cows when you eat them you get some sort of weird thing Nuclear right. cows, when you eat them, they explode. That would be very frightening. Like, like you just poke somebody in it, bang, it explodes. That would be weird. Do you, okay, off of this, uh, do you feel that this is the comeback for books? Because everyone is at home, and you can only binge so much Netflix. Can, can you only binge so much? Because I haven't found the end yet. Um, but... <laughs> I actually don't know what you mean. Me, I'm just like... <laughs> He can't binge. This boy cannot binge. Oh, I no, binge. that's that's probably a good thing. I, I think that certainly there has been more, more people have been paying attention to books and they've had more time to read. So obviously that's that's very helpful. And I think the other thing is that there are a lot of authors now because they're at home. Normally we're at home anyway, but they're reading from their books. So I think that's getting people a bit more interested in reading and hearing what the authors have to say, I hope. Um, about their writing. Yeah, and I read 15 books, so... That's wow! <laughs> part of the month. Man, I, I, I wish I could say that. I might be on three right now. Uh, what have you been doing at home? You know, it's it's funny. My life didn't change a lot, other, other than my daughter isn't at school, so she's at home all the time. But I was already getting up every morning and staying inside and writing was what I was doing. I would go for a few more walks than I have lately. And I'm also, uh, for the Saskatchewan Writers Guild, I'm the virtual writer in residence, which uh, means that I meet with people, but I only meet with them online. So, yeah. so I, haven't, I haven't had to change anything. It's, it's been actually really great that way. Yeah, that's actually, that's pretty cool. Like people who stay at home, they're just like, Okay, I don't have to change anything. Um, all good, all good. Yeah, I just have to stay six feet away from people, that's all. <laughs> yeah. How are you co coping, with coping. coping with the virus? You know, uh, I, I try not to get too stressed about it, is, is one thing. And I, I, I find that if I read, I actually heard a really good, one of the doctors was saying the best way, you know, whenever you're getting stressed or you're frightened about something new, like the virus, was to to learn about it, and the more you learn, then the less frightened frightened I was about how it works. So, so that's what I've been doing in in terms of just kind of understanding what's going on with our world and what this virus means. And otherwise, I've been coping by eating a lot of cookies. What kind? Uh, <laughs> I just had an M and M cookie because I had a, a bag of M and Ms. I'd been I'd hidden in my closet thinking someday I'm going to pull these M&Ms out and I'm going to surprise my family. And my daughter took them and she made a bunch of, uh, they were M&M and almond cookies. That's something. <laughs> it is. It was something that was really quite good. They're now gone, I'm sad to say. Should we ma mail you with some M&Ms maybe? <laughs> that would be great. Yes. We have, I like that. That. We have a lot of Skittles actually. Yeah. Oh. Do Skittles oh, grab the M&M's, they're in the cupboard. These are Skittles. Just we have wait. a lot of Skittles. <laughs> right here. Okay. Ooh. Yes. Those, those oh, I have a question. And Tom took all my seat. Your mom's yeah. literally over both of the seats, and I'm probably not even in the frame. Do you have any animals? Well, you know, we have uh, guinea pigs, which uh, are really weird. They're very weird animals. My friend used to have one. Yeah, they just stay in their cage. Basically, they run away from me whenever I go near. I'm pretty sure that 
I, I think they know now that I'm not going to eat them. So they've been there for two years. But uh, unless I have food, then they come running up. So actually, my daughter's kind of like that too. But anyway, uh, <laughs> so, so the three of them have been keeping me entertained so far. I have a follow up question with that. Yes. Do they have social distancing? <laughs> no, they, they do not because they're stuck in a cage. And I, I don't think they don't know what's going on in the outside world. So, so they're quite happy to be socially close to each other. Social closeness. It's okay for them. Not so much for us. How do you keep, uh, keep how are you keeping up with your pub publisher due to the virus? Oh, how many? Well, publishers, you know, again, things haven't really changed for me because I, I really only communicate with them through email. Once in a while, I'll phone, but I haven't even phoned lately. And so a lot of a lot of the things that I was doing before haven't really changed. It's changed for them because they've all gone home. They're all working from their houses now. But uh, for me, I just I just keep in touch and and um, they're they're adjusting to this to the to the way the world is right now. Yeah, and we are new. We are literally just doing stuff at home. Yeah, yeah. It, it, doing it, lives right here. It, it does. It feels like one really long Saturday that keeps going on and on and on. But it's a good Saturday so far. Well, not for me. I know the time because I know the time, like times of days, because I have school. <laughs> That's right. I, I guess. Yeah, I, I guess I'm. I'm partially helping my daughter with school too. So I do have to remember what day it is. Other than that, it still feels like Saturday for me. Do prob do do publishers uh, think they have it easy working at home? You know, I, I I'm kind of curious to how how that's going to change publishers and change. A lot of editors actually work at home, or they get a day or two off every week to go home and work. So I, I think that they're they might find that it's kind of nice to be home and not at the office. Uh, you know, unless the coffee is really good at the office, that might be what draws them back. I I know that the coffee is what, my da what draws my dad to Starbucks. So. <laughs> I don't know. That, that makes sense to me. Although I'm a tea drinker myself, so I, I don't yeah. totally understand the coffee thing. I don't like tea, though. No? Oh. I it do. just makes me feel very British. You know, like in the Moto books, I had to drink a lot of tea when I was writing those books because then I felt more British and I even developed a bit of an accent, but it's gone now. Do you have any stories you can share? <laughs> any, any stories like about, about me or about my childhood or... Um, any later stories or any funny stories in, stories in your childhood? Oh, any funny <laughs> stories in my childhood. Or funny. Uh, I, I try, trying to think about the, the time that I... Uh, I accidentally shot my my brother um with, That's a good idea with a with a pellet gun just to be sure i don't want you to think and and i only shot him once and, and it was in the foot and he did have a rubber boot on but it actually still hurt a lot anyway I, I i maybe shouldn't have told that story you might you might look down at me oh don't worry i've been paintballing before and i shot my best friend so my i was paintballing last like just about maybe a month ago in February. And yeah. so I was getting to my this person who had his birthday party. I was getting to know one of his friends. And then I I was just shooting my gun randomly <laughs> when the <laughs> round was over and I hit him in the head. Oh no. Because yeah. oh. those, those paintballs, they hurt. They really sting. Yeah, they do. <laughs> Our mom, I have to say this because it's on the list. Oh. Our mom says we look funny on mute. Oh, my boy, Dad, turn the caps off. Lock, lock off, please. Sorry. So, who said who said you look funny? We we look. My our mom says that we look funny on mute. No, 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 no. My dad. <laughs> it's on the list. My, okay, I kind of want to put it there. I yeah. want to come around and see that. Quickly. Okay. Okay. See what it looks like when you're on mute. Wait. Well, I can already see it when it looks like on Twitter because I frequently check it. Oh my god. <laughs> Usually it says that. Yep. 
That, it's a good question, I, and I think you should leave no question unturned. Okay, we or should unsaid. mute for a second and just... Because she's working. She has it on mute with her at home, at work. Oh, you're right. <laughs> That's... Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you guys really do pull that off. It's I a good question. No... Okay. Um, how do you feel that you published four books last year? You know, that was kind of a, it was kind of a crazy year. Um, just, it was actually hard to keep track of what I was supposed to be promoting and, uh, and what had just, what just came out. So, so I, it kept me really busy every, it seemed like, and I'm sure people on Facebook and Instagram who follow me were kind of bored of it by the time I got to the end of going, Hey, did you read this book? Did you read this book? Did you read this book? And I forget what this book is about, but did you read it? So that, that part of it was really kind of tiring, but it was nice to, uh, nice to get all those books out there in the world and to, to kind of see the reaction to them so far. Yeah, probably kind of busy. Uh, what is your goal for writing books this year? Well, it's funny, you know, because I had those books come out last year. I don't have any books coming out this year. So, um, and that's just the way it works sometimes with publishing. It's not that I'm not writing because I, I am busy. I have been quite busy actually working on, well, I'll even point at it because it's sitting right here. The third book in the Dragon Assassin series. Uh, this is just the first one right here. And of course you write books, you know, a year before they come out or even sometimes two years. Uh, I'm just working on the third one right now. And uh, that's been my main job for the last uh, two or three months. So I'm just, I'm on the, and this will sound really boring, but it's, it's exciting to me. I'm on the third draft, which is almost the final draft for me. So I can't wait. That's, like that's, kind, of, that's kind of cool. Yeah. I'll be happy when it's a story that other people can read and it's not just something in my head. Um, how, down. Your Twitter video on social distancing was widely loved. What was the inspiration? Hi, Canada. I know we're trying to figure out social distancing. This is the social distancing stick. This is perfect. I know you call the hockey stick, but we don't play hockey anymore. And this is almost six feet long. So what you do is you swing it around, you take it with you, and you swing it around at a grocery store. And um, if anybody gets hit by the stick, then you know they're too close. And if you hit somebody twice, that means you're playing hockey. So uh, don't play hockey because that's not good social distancing. So this is no longer a hockey stick. It is a social distancing stick. And it's also really great in case you ever have to touch your face because this is the only thing that should touch your face. <laughs> you know, um, that because of course it has a hockey stick in it um, and hockey sticks are like very Canadian. I know other people use hockey sticks in, a, in other countries, I'm sure. Yeah. Uh, but... But it was, uh, I just saw the hockey stick and I thought, you know what? My hockey stick, because it's hard to, re they keep saying it's two meters, right? Or six feet is how far we're supposed to be away from people. And it's hard to measure. It's hard to figure that out when you're just looking. And I thought, well, if you could just carry a hockey stick around all the time, you would know that, that you're, they're always six feet away. And that if you hit somebody, then they were too close. Or you were playing hockey, one or the other. Yeah, yeah mostly you were playing hockey. Yeah. Uh, well, that's actually mostly the other one, actually. Uh, does, because, like, you're not playing hockey anymore. Hockey, can, hockey Canada, Canada just, uh, let, um, oh, like, canceled all the season. That's right. Yeah. No, we aren't playing hockey. So we do have all these hockey sticks that are just waiting to be used. So I'm sure that everybody's just walking around grocery stores now with hockey sticks. In fact, I did see that even, I think it was CPC or CTV that, you know how they hold the microphone out to people when they're interviewing them? Yeah. Now they put and now they put it on the end of a hockey stick and hold it so that people can so they're not too close to them. Yeah, but uh actually I bet you the cameramen are like mm. <laughs> they have to capture all of that. That's right. That's right. Uh, do you have any suggestions on getting books now that stores are closed and Amazon is giving priority to essential the it is some taking some stuff weeks even with prime yeah i think you know that there's, there's a couple of ways of course you can still get books from the library but not going into the library you can get them online and again those are ebooks and that's i mean i read quite a few i read about half ebooks and half of these paper books right so i any reading that anytime i need a new book i've been buying ebooks the other thing is 
I know Amazon's doing that, but I know that in Canada, McNally and Indigo, they're still shipping books. So there's always, you know, there's, you can look around and maybe you can find a place that will be shipping them a bit faster to you. But it is kind of hard to wait, especially when you really want a book and it's going to be three weeks. That's like, oh, I, I, I don't know how you can wait. Yeah. Uh, our friend, uh, Sunny, Sunny, wants to write. Uh, so Sunny is one of our viewers. He's a yeah. viewer that we see a lot and he's a really good friend of ours. Yeah. I was there. And he's, he commented this. He wants to write a book about his transplant, transplant journey. Any tips? Oh, yeah. So that, that's, that's then a, a nonfiction book, right? It's, it's a, a book about something that happened. So I think that um, really it, the important thing to do is to just start where you think the story is the most interesting. And, and then, you know, just put, start putting down all, all the things that are important to you in the story. And then you can go back later and add, add other details. I think that, I guess what I'm saying is the most important thing to do is to just get the story out there. And then once you're done it, that's when, remember I was talking about being on my third revision. That's when you go through the revisions and start making, start making the story better and better and adding more things. That's what the second and third revision is about. But the first thing you should do is just sit down, not worry about whether it's a good story or what's going on, just get it out there. And then you can fix it up, so to speak. Okay. Well, yeah. um, How are your kids and wife dealing with the pandemic? Oh, they are so tired of me now. It's just been, it's so hard for them. I mean, really. Um, you know, my daughter did, did really, she's been doing really well. She actually uh, was meeting with some of her friends online uh, who were in her same group as her to our same class to do schoolwork, which I thought was really amazing. Uh, and they would meet every day from nine o'clock until three for the first week. But now they all seem to have broken up a little bit. And she's doing more schoolwork on her own and, and talking to them off and on. And my wife, you know, she works at home too. So again, it hasn't been a big change other than we just don't go out to movies or, or to, to dinner or anything like that. So in, in that sense, it, our life feels very much the same, except nobody comes to visit, which is probably a good thing. Yeah, it's a good thing to everybody. Uh... What came before your first dr book, Dragger? Oh, you know, I actually wrote um, six books before that. I had six books that I wrote one when I was 17 and I wrote another one when I was 20. And they were fantasy books and there were some horror books. And those books I sent to every publisher I could find and none of them wanted to publish it. And I think all those all six of those books were just practice for me. I had to figure out how to write a book properly. And so when, when Draugr came out, when I wrote that book, it was the first book I sent to a publisher and almost right away they said, yeah, we want to publish this. And I thought, wow, I finally figured out how to do this. So, so those other books, they're, they're probably never going to come out and they probably shouldn't because they're not really great stories. They were all my practicing. It's kind of like, you know, you don't, you don't want to watch Wayne, well, Wayne Gretzky probably knew how to skate the moment he was born, but you don't want to watch someone practice all the time. You want to see them play the game, right? That's just like a novel. You don't want to read my bad novels, my practice ones. Probably better to read my ones where I actually know what I'm doing. Yeah. And that's why people like tend to go in and read the hits. That's right. Sometimes it's just um, fun to just read the practice one and kind of like get to know like how they need to improve. Probably send, yep. maybe even like a send a letter to them and say, that's why you yep. have to like, you have to improve so-and-so and stuff like that. Um, yeah. is there a genre of fiction you want to explore? You know, right, I, I, keep, I, I like so many different genres that I'm always kind of changing my mind about what I'm going to write about. So right now, I'm completely into fantasy. I, I loved reading The Lord of the Rings and The Hobbit and, uh, and Harry Potter, all those kind of books. I love reading them. And now I'm, I'm finally, I'm writing them. So I feel I'm very uh, interested in continuing to write fantasy. But I also just started, because I'm crazy, I also started a science fiction book, too, so that's set in the future. So all, all of that, I'm always trying to try something new and yet write something that I'm also interested in. Um, does it include a pandemic? Uh, <laughs> you know, I don't have any books that have pandemics in it. And uh, 
I, I think that uh, uh, right now I, I would probably avoid that. There are actually lots and lots of people who have written books with pandemics and they're selling right now uh, really well right now. I'm just, uh, I'm a little late for that little uh, publicity train, so to speak. Yeah. Um, this was a comment. Uh, Sony says, thanks. He never knew where to start. Oh, that's good. Yeah, well, you're welcome. If you had another job, what would it be? Oh, you know, there were, and these will sound like weird jobs. There's two jobs that come to mind. Uh, the first one is I'd like to be a librarian because I, I think lots of librarians aren't weird. But um, that sounds like a weird job because all I do is write books. But I'd love the whole idea of being paid to like put books away and take them out. And that sounds perfect to me. I know they do more than that. The other job I want, and I don't think I'll get it, is I want to be a heavy metal guitarist. And it's just my my hair isn't isn't right anymore, uh, isn't long enough. And even though I played guitar for years, I just never could quite get the power chords down perfectly. Our mom always wants to fix the shelves in chapters. She oh. literally just takes books and just fix the shelves. It's yeah. it's kind of I kind of get the feeling that she wants to like be a librarian. Yeah, um, it's a it's a good job, and you know authors do that too. Although normally we go into bookstores and take our book and put it so that our cover is facing and other people can see it. I mean, I've never done that myself, but I think other authors have done that. Have you seen the online music lessons with the Artels? No, I haven't. Are they good? Yeah, you should try. Oh. You should. Oh. Wow. I've never. I haven't seen. I've seen one, but I've never like gotten on my dad's guitar and done anything. No. Oh, what, what kind of heavy metal do they play? Uh, they don't play heavy metal, but they play. <laughs> I know. I I I don't. I I. But I will have to look those up because. Uh, uh, yeah. it, there are so many great things on, online right now that finally there's time to look at them. And there might even be one going on right now. I mean, but, I'm not going to skip out from this and collect. No, no, <laughs> no. We can, we can, everybody can look later. That's right. Oh, and right now we're actually competing with the NBA and DC Comics on Instagram. Oh, really? Uh, oh, it's, it's, wow. kind of it's, it's, like, it's kind of like Superman versus Batman versus Marvel. Versus, versus us, yeah, or you. Versus, versus, etc. Versus, <laughs> etc. <cetera. laughs> is this your first live? This is. Well, I've done Instagram live on my own, but it's I, it's the first time that I've uh, been interviewed. So I really, I'm really enjoying the format. I didn't realize how uh, how easy it is. Yeah, it's actually really easy. Yeah. Is that, it's surprisingly easy. I. Yeah. I thought it would be much, much harder. Like, I'm, you have to go, like, plan it in hours ahead. It, well, you do have to. I Thank you for joining us. Today. No, I wasn't, I wasn't done. <laughs> I wasn't done. <laughs> so, buy our merch. There, it's only $20, and all proceeds go to COVID-19. We have Hockey Club and Massey Twin Shirts wrapped up. And tomorrow at 1 o'clock, our live, we're interviewing... Todd Kearns from Duke. Thank you for interviewing wow. us today. <laughs> We're just doing some you're sort of thing. Amen. You're, to you're totally welcome. Thank, thank you. Thank okay. You. Take See care. You, buddy. Peace. <laughs>